Ray, I can call. Can I call you Ray? Yeah. Okay. Call me Ray. Yeah. They all call me Ray. Everybody loves Ray. Everybody loves Ray. <laughs> let's start at the beginning when you. Well, let's let's go back to where you were born. Explain oh, okay. to me where you were born, what it was like, and why you ended up coming to America. Oh, okay. The family. So, yeah. uh, I was born in Corfino, Provincia L'Aquila, in Italy. Okay, and. Uh, I grew up there. I went to school and things like that. And then I went to three, four years for commercial school in Sumon, another city. And then I come back. After that, there was a war back in 1940. And uh, I saw Mussolini one time. And he was a, but he was such a, uh, you know, talking, make a fire in your head. And, you know, I, and I used to adore him. The first time I saw in a movie, because we are no television, nothing, on a movie in the city, I couldn't stand this position. I started hating him, that son of a This is the guy I know him. Really, completely changed me, completely. I said, this bastard is a, you know, he, he confused people because the way he talk, he make you feel fire in you. you know? But when you see the movement, oh my God. Even Hitler went to like a dog, mad dog. I hate him. I've been a partisan. I fought to liberate Italy. Called a Brigada Mayella. The that underground. Almost a year and a half, you know, things like that. One time, one bomb we was sitting over there. We were shooting on a church way up. Oh my God. We shoot like that, we hire a motor, motors like this, you know. One guy put the bomb, I direct the bomb. And the German, they were right in the church with them. Um, they, sh they can use, through the bomb like that. It was one uh, circle like that. We were three, one, three guys with a bomb, with a motor. We shoot them against them, we shoot them against them. One bomb, I held my hand, I hand the whistle, put my hand down. The much high, my head was like, the bomb came right here. It shook me. It covered me, all of the dirt and everything. My cousin was a lieutenant watching the, uh, uh, the action. He saw, he fainted. He was a lieutenant. He fainted. And he, the guy picked him up. And he I soon as he picked it up, pick up. Get, get, get him, get him, get him. I was shaking myself like that. He picked him up, they brought me in. He ran my home. Are you okay? Are you okay? He shook his head, my head, the thing like that. Now, if you don't go home, I don't want to tell my, uh, my aunt that you were over there. He said, I'm going to kill you myself. You got to go back home. You think I believe him? I was 18, 17 years old, 18 years old. So, so after, after the war. After the war. Is that when you came to America? Yeah, after the war. In, in but the, what made me mad? Yeah. My brother and I, we both served in the Brigade of America too. He said one month on the Italian army, because he was already the Golden Army, but I never paid that legion to the Italian firm. So the armistice came, so he came back home after three days from Rome. Come back home. And he came in six months in this country. We applied to come in. Me and him, the same thing. Me, I had to wait two and a half years before I came here. I was so mad. What I done? I done the best I can. I was going crazy. Finally, they came. But they gave me the American citizenship in Rome. I had a pledge into the United States. They gave me the passport, American passport. I came with the American passport here. And I what year was that? Back in 1949. All right. How about, and then you came and lived where when you came? In Dedham? Uh, Dedham. Oh. And now, uh -huh. who, who had the house in Dedham and who was involved? Now, we, we came, when we came, my brother and him, he had rent an apartment, and my brother and him, they were living together. When I came, you know, we were there for two or three months. It was a guy nearby, he had a little store, an Italian, from Corfino too. Corfino, he had a store where he used to buy food and things like that. 
Then my, my father says, what are we going to do, my sister, then coming my sister. And he says, what buy support, buy a house, you know, things like that. Uh, what was that? And there, an old school house. He paid that five thousand and five hundred dollars for that. So we had to live over there. We moved there. My father used to buy all the equipment and things like that. We used to call one guy who knew the business, things like that, and show me, show us how to do it. Well, I wasn't captain, I was a tailor when I came in here. <laughs> We used to go and give back five dollars. He used to give five dollars. He used to give the check to my father, things like that. But I just, that was after four or five years, you know. So he gave a cigarette, just for cigarette and movie and things like that. Everybody was like this. My sister went to Chicago with her husband. She, he gave me five thousand dollars to him to we sold the house after we finished the album, after a few years, you know. What? Sold the house. And when we start a business, we start without we thinking. My brother and my two uh, father, his father, and my, my other brother-in-law, and we're working on a fat, a light container. They used to make corrugated boxes like that. They used to be working over there. They know what to do. I don't know. I was a tailor. I was a you know, They made a tailor. corrugated boxes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I said, no, not a cardboard box. No. <laughs> and I was there, but. Uh, I didn't know anything about it, but I, he gave me five thousand dollars. My father gave me five thousand dollars to me, and to everybody, to everybody. So we started this business because we know how to do it. By old machine, one uh, uh, corrugator, uh, I don't know, the presser, the press, <coughs> press one, either straw, the tip machine. Excuse me. Where I used to were work you on doing the tip this machine. And I, we, I lose where? the truck too when I come where? in. I'll, Excuse me, I'll right. continue used to bring the sheets with us, you know. All size we used to order first. It was to print, it was to make the regular box like that. But where? Right. Where, where did this happen? Where did you stop? We started in uh, Fitchburg. Uh, you rented from who? Uh, we rented for Sam Clemente. He had a right. business there. Okay. He had a 15,000 square feet. I don't think we put the machine in there. And they used to deliver all the paper, the sheets, you know, things like that. And we used to make a box out of it. I used to, was a, they much open like that. I used to go up like that with a jack, thing like that. Just pick up the, the thing like that, pour all the, like this. We had a thing, but in the end, there was a two column, all that. On the side, we used to look at the different places beyond lots. And then, when we reach the point, we pull it out completely. We are all, all tough time in them. Don't talk about it. Don't. Yes. We really, I uh, put all my strength in them. I was a young man. <laughs> One of the tough times that my father told me about was <clears throat> when the company was in its infancy. We were buying the raw material from Allied Container 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where they uh, all work. And um, <clears throat> something happened at Allied Container. A company went out of business. <clears throat> so Nathan Schwartz, the Schwartz family owned Allied Container. Mm -hmm. Nathan Schwartz was the chairman and CEO of the company. His son Joe was the president. His son Irving was the vice president. Nathan called my father because he saw on the books that star container owed Ally $20,000. Unsecured. What did you your father's name for it? Tio, T-E-O. Vittorioso. Tito Rico. Yeah, Vittorioso. Okay. Uh, so Nathan called Tio, and he said, I'm shutting you off. No more sheets. And my father says, what, what do I have to do to, to start up again? He says, Un until you put $20,000 in escrow, <coughs> then we can start up again. So my father went to his partners, some family members. <clears throat> they collected the 20000 They put it in escrow. 
My father called Nathan, and he says, all right, we got the money in escrow. Send me the contract. Nathan sent him the contract. The contract said $20,000 plus interest. Yeah. My father calls Nathan, and he says, I can't sign this contract. I said, why not? He says, we never agreed to 20000 plus interest. Nathan says, you don't need the interest. My father says, I don't need the interest. My wife needs the interest. If she wants to go buy my son a pair of shoes, she has to have access to the money. Nathan says, rip up the contract. I'll give you $25,000 unsecured. I'll start shipping your sheets tomorrow. And we were back in business. Tell Just with about, that one statement. Tell us about that first order you got when you started. The re after <clears throat> the fella, a fellow by the name of Clarence Elaine. Oh, he yes. was a CPA in London. Mm -hmm. He put the company together on paper. Mm. And um, Clarence had a good friend at Classic Academy. His name was A.B. Ben-Garazzi. So we had two pieces of equipment which you needed to make a box. We had the name Star after my uncle Sandro, my father Tio, my uncle Aldo, Osvaldo, and my uncle Ray sitting next to me, Star. That's how we got the name. Mm -hmm. And if you spell it backwards, you get rats. <laughs> so, I didn't think of that. But that <laughs> in some days. We don't scratch the one. That's, <laughs> in some days, it felt like we worked for rats. When you, <laughs> but they were, they, were good, they were good to us. They were good to the family and mm -hmm. the kids. So uh, anyway, Clarence knew A.B. very well. And uh, he went to A.B. and he said, um, I got four, four kids. Uh, they started a corrugated company in Fitchburg. They're really hungry. I think they're going to do a real good job. Um, they're going to be successful. Why don't you try them? Give them an order. Why don't you give us the full names of the four partners? My father, well, we'll start with Sandro. Sandro Campagna, yeah. my uncle's brother. Tito Vittorioso, mm -hmm. Osvaldo Frizzoco, they called Aldo, mm -hmm. and my uncle Rivella, right, Campagna. Right. So they, um, so A.B. says, sure, I'll try him. Um, here's the size. He gave him the size, 12 by 12 by 12. And um, he says, have him give me a price. If they're 5% less, I'll give them an order. So Clarence says, well, where do they have to be? And he gave him some guidance. Clarence calls Tio. Tio called Nathan Schwartz, that ally. And he says, Al, uh, Nathan, I need an order for 1,000 sheets. And he sent them 1,000 sheets. 12 by 12 by 12 is roughly 48, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 25 by 50. That's the blank size that you order uh, to make the box. So we got in 1,000 sheets. So these guys had nothing to do. So they ran the boxes without a order. So my father gave Clarence a price because Clarence gave me some guidance. <clears throat> And it was a good price, so he went back to A.B., and A.B. says, yeah, that's a good price, but I have to see a sample first. So Clarence calls T.A. and he says, he wants to see a sample. Can you give him a sample? He says, yeah, I can give him a sample. My father jumped in the car. He grabbed the box, jumped in the car, he went to see A.B., and he gave him a sample. It had fragile printed on four sides. And A.B. says to Tio, it's a nice box. You've got a good price. When can I have it? My father says, this afternoon. He says, this afternoon? He says, my suppliers give me two weeks. He says, you can have them this afternoon. The box is already made. Yeah. 
So my uncle put him on the truck. My father drove the truck to Placid Academy. And ever since that day, they did 100% business with Star Container. And we grew to over $3 million in sales with Tucker Housewares eventually. Mm -hmm. That was our first order. That's how we got started, with that one order. When you got that first order, where were you making the boxes out of? I, you know, we grew up together, naturally. You talked about in a garage. They started in a garage? No, they started in Sam Clemente's building. In yeah. 15,000 square feet. Where was Sam Clemente's, Sam Clemente's building? River yeah. Street River in Street Fitchburg, Street near Fitchburg, Fitchburg Woolen and all the no, Woolen they got, Mills. They got a, you know, Housing apartment there. down. Mm -hmm. And Sam Clemente, was he from the same town in Italy? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you it came was, here... He was younger than me, too. You, yeah. It, yeah. it was kind of like a, a lucky stroke that okay. he was in business and had some place, yeah. and you guys were yeah. from were the they, same same town. Were they, Weren't all the partners from the same town? What? Sam Clemente, yeah. all, my, my uncles and my father, Franny Casbaro, Mm -hmm. All from Corfino. All, all very successful. There. Zarpos, they were all yeah. from Corfino. Yeah. All from the same street. Mm -hmm. Wow. Not from the same town. Yeah. All from the same That's street. Amazing. Now, and then what was the next step in the company's growth after the first building when we grew out of Fitchburg? Oh, well, we had to move there because we had a little bit more business. Yeah. Yeah. San Clemente built a new uh, business. Oh, what's the name of the street? Though? Industrial Road. Industrial Road. And rent another 20,000 square feet. 20,000. Yeah. Yeah. So we put some more, one more machine and things like that. And we used to work over there. In two years, we grew up. We they had to move. Yeah. So we, we built a, a, a Nashville Street, 20,000 square feet way down the Nashville Street. Mohawk Drive. Mohawk. Yeah. Mohawk mm -hmm. Drive. Yeah. Oh, Mohawk Drive. What year was that about? 70. Uh, Seventy. Yeah. Okay. And and then another couple of years, we we'll get more and more and more. Build another twenty thousand square feet over there. It's simple. And yeah. then we go. Yeah. Man, we ruined all the sheets and things like that because after the leave or thing like that, one can even buy machine. We make a coal gill do everything, you know. And so we start a, another business of. What's the name of the street over there? Pioneer Drive? Pioneer, Pioneer Drive. Pioneer Drive, Drive. Yeah. 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 Pioneer Drive, we sell, you know, think we put a corrugator, an old corrugator machine. What year was that? Oh, Pioneer? I don't remember. That was in the 80s? Late uh, 70s, 77, 79. Early 80s, yeah. Yeah. Late 70s, yeah. Then we built another 20,000 square feet like that. Then the pure mall. Every, every two or three years, we had to build more. I don't know how many square feet are now. 200,000. Anyway, 200,000. Wow. Anyway, we had to work night and days without the, you know, to make the sheets, the thing like that, when they corrugate. So we called Theo and my, my brother, they went to Italy, in Milan. Oh, yeah. And they found this uh, new machine, corrugate machine in there, five million dollars. Five million dollars, it's just too much money, things like that. The machine, after we bought it and things like that, in 10 hours, used to make the same amount of the other machine, old machine, in 10 hours. In 24 hours, the, other, the old machine. Oh. So we grow back like that, and we get too old. And I retire, the first one I retire me, and, and then all the three of them, they, they give up too anyway. And when he was talking about the uh, second building, when they were things, the boxes were getting ruined and stuff, it was the paper. They used to buy big, big, giant rolls of paper yeah. from. Um, Saint Regis was the inside was the, first, the, yeah. the, the, the factory. I mean, and know. so when they built this other end to the factory. They put a train track in yeah. there. So the train would come, leave a car with paper in there, all inside the shop. So there was no more waste of the paper. Sandra, years ago, I took pictures for you guys inside of all the rolls and the machines going. Those still anywhere? I mean, I can't find the negatives. No. I mean, the I remember. Pictures? Yeah. The pictures are gone. The machines are gone. The company's gone. <laughs> Everything's gone, all right. Jack. 
Another I got a I'm story. the only I got, man to myself. <laughs> I got a story man. for this guy, how <laughs> business-minded he was in high school. Uh -huh. He had a date with, with a girl. I can't remember her name. Uh -huh. Or if I remember, I'm not going to say uh -huh. it. You're getting, well, I'm married. You can't say it. It wasn't, it wasn't Len. He took her on this ledge behind uh, the Civic Center in Fitchburg, uh -huh. and you could see out, and it was all beautiful, beautiful forests. Uh -huh. And he looked at her, and he says... Do you know how many boxes we can make with those trees? <laughs> and that story was all over the high school. Sandro took her up there to make out, and he's talking about boxes. <laughs> he wanted to see if she really oh, loved him. That's <laughs> right. That's a, well, I didn't marry her. Was so. that true? I, I, I don't remember. I, <laughs> that was the story going around high school. I don't remember the story. I don't remember the girl. I'll but. tell you her name after. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, All right, so, so you're now in at Pioneer Park. You've uh, got a 200,000 square, square foot yeah. building. Yeah. yeah. Um, you've got the ability to bring railroad cars in. Yeah, yeah we're making our own boxes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> our own uh, sheets of paper, yeah. corrugated right. paper. You want to explain the process of how the corrugated is made? Yes, the, you need three rolls of paper. Yeah. The... Um, one outside, one. outside facing is the print, printed side. Then you have the medium, the corrugation, mm -hmm. and then you have the inside liner. So the inside liner and the corrugation is where you get all the stacking strength in the box. So you have, at the, at the corrugator, you have two rolls in the beginning that are laminated together. It's the outside and the corrugated medium. That passes over a bridge. It builds up slack over a bridge. And then the third station, all those two layers are laminated to the inside part of the box. That's another roll of paper. So you've got one long, it's like one long piece of spaghetti. And then it gets cut to customer specification. And we had a 98-inch corrugator. So the, the, the orders, the blank size of the orders, have to trim to 98 inches. So if, when you open up a box, and your box, if you're, if you're Tucker Housewares, and your box is 45 inches wide, we need another box to equal 98 inches, to, to marry it up, to run it. And then it gets automatically stacked at the end of the corrugator. And then a truck, uh, a, pick, a forklift uh, comes and, and picks up the uh, pallets of board and brings them over the, con the uh, converting machines. Mm -hmm. And we convert it into a box. All in one pass. And then, you know, so Slot it, like, print it, glue it. So the sheet goes through and there's rollers to put the creases where they need to go? Yes. And then it gets folded and glued at the same time? All in one operation, yeah. all in one pack. So our machine, they go, the box will go like this, another machine will bend it like this, another one put the glue, when it pass like that, glue in between like that. That's all out of it. And go all the way through, uh, down with the heating like that, and make a package of 10 or 15 or whatever mm -hmm. the, the size Bundles, of the box yeah. is. And when they first got okay. tie them up, you know. So. When they first got that big machine from Italy, they had to keep shutting. It replaced a whole crew, a whole shift. Mm -hmm. It used to make boxes so fast, and then the sh uh, it kept stopping. The machine kept stopping, and they had their their uh, workmen, crafters, whatever, trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. They couldn't, so they got the guy come, to come from Italy. And all that was the problem was there was this big fan blowing on the machine to keep it cool, and it would suck all that stuff being cut. That's how fast oh, everything dust. was going. Paper and dust. the fan would stop, and the thing would overheat. Mm -hmm. So they said, you just have to clean this all the time. I mean, and that's not even every, it was every, quite a bit. They had to clean that. I, get, I get, remember that. That was I so. I got a question. This is probably not. Like, if I'm a customer and I come in and I want a box, uh, are there certain specifications in terms of 
uh, the strength of the cardboard you make for Correct. particular things. Yeah. And you want to explain yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah. On the bottom of every box, yeah. there's a cert stamp, certification. Mm -hmm. That's required by the truckers. Mm -hmm. Because when they move material, they want to make sure that if something happens, you're, the box is made properly. Something happens to the product. So you have the name of the company. In this case, this is the company I represent today, Abbott Action, Abbott Mass. And you have the strength. This is a single wall box, which means there's only one wall, which is three layers. There's double wall, which is five layers. And then there's triple wall. Triple wall is usually furniture yeah. box. Mm -hmm or refrigerators and appliances. Um, so then you have, uh, in this particular case, the, the industry has changed from Mullen test, which is a puncture test, mm -hmm. uh, a burst, burst test, to an edge crush test. And the difference is edge crush, when you stack the boxes, mm -hmm. it's the it's really the edge of the box that you want to perform mm -hmm. properly. It's not so much the, the puncture of the box. So uh, most of the boxes today are ECT32. Uh, and then from there, you know, you go to 44 ECT, heavyweight, depending on the product. And it, that's up to the customer working with the design engineer. Speaking of design engineers, when, when you were growing and you know, the, the brothers and cousins were involved, what roles did each one of them play? You could have all been bosses, or could you? No, <laughs> his father used to work in the office all the okay. time. You know. My brother was the president of the company, and I used to work on the finished room or in the back, in the back. All the time. Always while I watch the machine, the printing and things like that. But, but my brother and Theo, they were more involved in, on With business, the doing yeah. business. But we watch the, you know, the corrugate the, the way it was. And in the end, you know, something wrong, we stop them and we try to correct, you know. But he, his father used to work on, he used to work before on a Kurgan company, a light container. Okay, I used to work over there. And my brother too, Aaron Oswald. Me, I was a tailor. I never worked before. So when I invest the money, I invest the money. If a thing was wrong, you know, I go back to be a tailor. They were in jeopardy more than me. Because if they were everything wrong, they lose the job, they had a fun job. But me, tailor, you can find a job anyway, you know. You could. But one time, the last time I, before I started business, uh, I was working on some company used to make overcoat nearby, the, you know, the opera house in Boston. I was working there, and this guy he was from a blue city, where the, my uh, town is, and he came to me with a big, beautiful vicuna overcoat, beautiful, look like a a mantle, big one. And he says to me, you gotta make a stitch about one eighth of an inch on the edge of the collar up until here on the overcoat. Another three eighth of an inch after, thing like that, all by hand. He took me in a buttonhole by hand, too. So he come in up in the afternoon, he come in and says, well, oh, I think it's just over. Just I finished the buttonhole. So he check her out with a, you know, with the ruler. ruler, check her out all over the place. I says, I says to him, but what I have so much fuss for this coat? He says, I know it's a very good coat. He says, would it belong to the god or something? <laughs> he says, settle up. No, I think, if I tell you, you don't believe me. What do you mean you don't believe me? I did the job, no one tell me. Jackie Gleason, no <laughs> one that said it. $5,000 back in 1960s. Wow. 
$5,000. I was just going to say, so of the company, you're the last of the original founders that's yeah. alive, correct? Right? Mm -hmm. You want to tell us how old you are? No, 96. Thank God bless. Yeah. Yeah. When I you were born in July 16, 1926. And he's a twin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah my, my sister's still alive, too. And she's 96. Mm -hmm. But he was one hour later. <laughs> yeah, he's over. I tell him they would have said that anyway. The guy's always going to come first over there. <laughs> I'm just having memories, but I can't remember any anymore. I took pictures at somebody's birthday party years ago. And did somebody, was somebody a singer? Right here. Were you were the one that was a singer? He still sings. Sing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. like really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he still sings. Not still anymore. <laughs> Really? Yeah. yeah. I remember oh, yeah. at the party, you, the, the, it was you singing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it was the birthday party for, it might have been for you and your sister. I, I got the pictures. I, I still know. got those pictures. I, I can't find a box it? factory, but I can find. Where was it? Oh, I think it was at the Sheraton. Okay. Could have been. Could be. Yeah. Could be, yeah. It's got to be in, oh, boy. Could be, yeah. Like late 70s? Maybe yeah, I, I, it was a small party in a, in a, I think it was a, a wedding or something. It was, you know. No, it was a birthday party. I'll, uh -huh. I'll send you some of the pictures. I remember them. that, yeah. yeah. I took pictures of that. But um, when you were at the peak. I used to sing opera. Yeah, that's what you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember I was taking a lesson because of this Tartaglia you, you at a radio station. <laughs> And he hear me singing and feeling like, oh, but you got a beautiful voice. Why don't you take a lesson? <laughs> Who the hell got to pay that lesson? Uh -huh. This guy is from Naples, he says. I mean, but he's very good. He used to be a singer on, on the opera star. He says, now he, he give a lesson. I used to give him a $2 a lesson. So I went there. He gave me a lesson after a year. I was, you know, I was singing La Boheme. No, stay. Hey, this you can. You really shit. How would you sing that song any old like this? Because I was open up completely. And, no, me, it's you to teach me. I said to him, oh, come on. That's what. I used to sing the opera at that time, but now I can't do nothing anymore. I got another question, because I, I always go through this in my life review. Mm -hmm. you, you were a tailor, yeah. and you could sing yeah. with the best of them, <laughs> and you ended up you know, <laughs> be a, making a, making a box, <laughs> box factory. Did you ever have a dream of, like if you, just let's just say you could go back did you ever have a dream of what you what, what you would do? <laughs> never, never, never in my mind. I used to sing in church when I was in, in Italy, you know, back right then. But no, I was like this. Their but their town was one awesome. time in East Boston. This guy, this announcer on a TV, on a, a radio, he made a show, Filomena Martoran. It was a, in Italy. It was a movie with. Um, Sophia Loren. So we had a stage in East Boston, almost 90% of people from Italy, things like that. On the theater, he uh, let me sing a song over there. It was a girl who used to work for me, uh, with me on a, on a Saturday, where we used to make <coughs> And she was about maybe four or five row behind. I was singing. C'è una strada nel bosco, il suo nome conosco. And she says, she made like this to me. Back up, because I was too close to the microphone. So I back up like that, she made like this, and I open up. When she made like this, I make it open. He stand up, oh, go, oh, I play like that. <laughs> but their town was occupied during the mm. war, and the thing that he fought in was an underground. They had no military issued anything. They just came to fight. And in Italy, they're doing a um, thing now. 
they want to meet these guys. <coughs> He's been interviewed many times for that. And because they're amazed that these guys fought so hard with nothing, and they, um, they did it because they loved their country. They wanted to protect their country. The others, a lot of them, they enlist because they have to, but this was passion to them. So they, um, I think the thing he wanted most was to leave the town and come back and make it better because he, it needed help. On the police, uh, we conquered that time when the bomb fell nearby me. It was called Monte Mauro. It was a little church right there, maybe two, three hundred yards up, almost like a wall, be like this. And we stood with, you know, the motor, very rich up there, you know. This guy, he can throw the bomb like this. Now, your father, Sandro, was in the He was in the Navy. Italian Navy. Navy yeah. 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 You know the show, yeah. <clears throat> did, you ever, did you ever watch McHale's Navy? Yeah. yeah. That was the Italian Navy, <laughs> yeah. Mikhail's Navy. He had it a little easier. You want than some? That one. Yeah, I'll tell you a couple stories about the Italian Navy. <laughs> My father was the uh, chief radar officer on a PT boat, and one day they were on maneuvers, and all of a sudden the boat stopped, and the captain of the ship. They had about 300 sailors on this PT boat. And they were all going crazy. Why'd the boat stop? They couldn't figure it out. So the captain called all 300 sailors together. And he says, OK, I'm going to select the best swimmer. <laughs> and we're going to suit you up in a wetsuit, head to toe, goggles, tank, flippers. You're going to jump into the water, and you're going to swim to the back of the boat, see what the problem is, and then you're going to swim to the front of the boat, see what the problem is, swim back, we're going to pull you up, and you report to me. Okay, so he selected one of the best swimmers, dressed them up, he jumped overboard, and he landed in ankle-deep water. Oh, you had no. 300 sailors burst out <laughs> laughing. They hit a sandbar. That was why they stopped. <laughs> so they this in, is in Italy? Yeah. Yes, yeah. in Italy. Okay. When you guys were at your biggest, how far did you ship? And like, who were some of your biggest clients? Our biggest client, or two, we had uh, uh, Tucker. Housewares and Sterilite were both yeah. three million. Mm. Sterilite and the last time, what was the last one? With three million in sales. Yeah. Uh, Chubby Sully. Yeah, Chubby Sully. And Al Stone and his sons mm -hmm. were very, very good to our company. Mm -hmm. Without them, I don't think we would ever survive because they bought they were, all of them. They were very good, and then we had the, you know, the Tossies. Lenny, Richard, yeah. American Hangar. Sportsman's Plastic. Sportsman's Plastic. Oh, yeah. Did you do over a million with us? No, but Bernie Mayer was that guy. But, yeah. So, he was your salesman. Yeah, Hank bought 100% from us. But the big ones, the really big ones, were uh, American Hangar, uh, Victory Button, uh -huh. Louis Victory Rocker, Button. Yeah. the yeah. Tater mm -hmm. family, yeah. uh, Wachusa Potato Chips, mm -hmm. Eddie oh, Kruziak. Yeah. Another million dollar account. Uh, there was so several. Most, these, so are all all local, these are stuff. all local companies. We, mm -hmm. Yeah, and we all, grew. Well, Wachusett, I think, is. That's we because over here they Wachusett used a lot of yeah. We grew Foster Grant, yeah. well, 100%. Did you, did you have Foster Grant? Wow. Yeah. And now cool. all these companies are gone, pretty much. I mean, all gone. Yeah, pretty much. All gone. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'll tell you a cute story about, uh, well, we had a fellow by uh, the name of, uh, do you know Jim Barry? I know, I know, I think I know the he name. He was a I, buyer at Foster yeah. Grant. Uh, and that, uh, where Cal and uh, Racy worked, right? 
Jack's parents. So we were doing 100% with Foster Grant. And uh, Jim called my father, and he says, I got this company, Johnny Kane and Air. Uh, and I can get you an order. I know the buyer. I thought, OK. So um, he calls uh, the buyer, and he says, I'll try stock container out. <coughs> um, I need 10,000 boxes. It's one of our big movers. And at that time, 10,000 boxes to stock container was a huge order. It would you know, take them a week mm -hmm. to make 10,000 boxes. So they, um, anyway, they got the order. <clears throat> they ran the boxes. And we were big enough at the time where Allied Container was sh shipping us sheets and then drop in the trailer, and then they rotate the trailer. As we empty the trailer, they bring up another trailer. Mm -hmm. So they kept uh, the two trailers in rotation. Uh, so one was always empty at Star. So they ran 10,000 boxes, and my uncle Sandro went to my father and started yelling because they didn't have enough floor space for, this bo for these boxes. Mm -hmm. And my father says, well, put them in the trailer that's empty. So he loaded the trailer. In the meantime, the guy from Johnny Kane calls, and he says, Tio, I made a mistake. I'm going to run out of boxes. You've got to get those boxes over to me fast as you can. There's no problem. They're already loaded in the trailer. <laughs> So he tells my uncle, deliver the truck, deliver the boxes. Oh, we're lucky. You know, we're <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you got a couple of good lucky strokes there. So they, was yeah. that the mayonnaise people? Yeah, Johnny King. So yeah. they deliver the truck, yeah. the boxes in the truck, and the Allied container truck, not our <laughs> truck. So the truck's being unloaded. All of a sudden, another Allied container truck shows up. <laughs> it, it's their account. So now when the truck is waiting, the driver has to call in and says, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be late. He's got to call his shipping manager. So he calls in, and he says, there's another truck being unloaded. Mm -hmm. And the manager says, well, we had an appointment. Who's in front of you? He says, there's an Allied container truck in front of me. <laughs> he says, I only sent one Allied container truck. How, did, how is there another Allied container truck there? He says, go get the tra trailer number. So we went out, got the number, called his manager back, and the manager goes down the list, and he says, that trailer's at Stock Container. Why is he doing it at uh, Johnny Kane? So he had to go see the general manager. General manager calls my father, and he starts screaming at him. He says, Teal, what are you doing? using our truck to deliver your boxes at our customer? And my father says, you should pay us. <laughs> he said, why should I pay you? He says, we're giving you advertisement. <laughs> and that, that's a true story that happened. Uh, yeah. How did that pan out? No, they, were, they just laughed it all off? Or? They kept right. doing business yeah. with us, yeah. Wow. Yeah, because of the... They, you know, they don't want to lose the volume, and they, yeah. yeah. That happened all the time. We, we compete, we compete with Rand Whitney, and we bought from Rand Whitney. I mean, Robert uh, Kraft and... Uh, well, he came in one, he, one down uh, on our shop. He, uh, I mean, he had a 35-year relationship with uh, the company. And he, whenever he got into a new adventure, he'd call us, and we'd do business with him. What happened to Stock Container? Did it get bought out? Well, Did it? You know, it was better than me because he yeah. stayed longer than me. <laughs> I retired before them. Yes, we got bought out. Okay. Can't say who? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's a large Canadian forest product company called mm -hmm. Cascades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Narampat. North American paper company, Narampat. And uh, are they still in business? Is yeah. 
Is that building still being used? Yes, the building. We sold the building to uh, Mark Gasparro. Yeah, he's, he's using the building. He's in Joshua Mulder. Yeah, Mark is barren now. He owns two buildings and one no, after the other. Just one, right? No, I think he owned S. I, was he in SAY Industries too? He was. Yeah. So but he, a, I don't know if he still is. And his father, uh, his grandfather, I think his father. Oh, his father. His yeah. father came from my hometown too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know Frank Casbaro? Mm -hmm. He's he got one, one foot like that. Well, tell him the story. Uh, this guy, he was nine years old, during the German occupation in Italy, Frank Asbaro. He was nine years old. He was a poor, poor fight guy. They had a, you know, think of it with the, all the, 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 the German left outside. A pile, a pile of rubbish. A pile. Mm -hmm. So they started throwing stones on that. One was a miner. Ugh. They blew up. And he, he's the only one who got, you know, got like this. Shrapnel. And uh, so the doctor come in, uh, he wanted to cut the food, the thing like that. He's the grandmother was there, which he lived in this country before that. He said, no, 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 don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. And so far, he's still alive. Yeah, his... And he play a good goal, too. He told me right. that... When he was laying in the street, the doctor came, and his mother was crying, and his leg was all open, and the doctor said, we have to amputate it. And then his grandmother came down, and she said, no, 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 you're not touching that. And she said, you bring him upstairs to the third floor, and I will take care of it with poultices and stuff. A whole year he laid in that bed, and he still has his leg. All he has is a little limp. <clears throat> but he yeah. does everything with it. And he grew up, we bought the first uh, shop where Sam Clement started, too. We bought that, and he started a business like that. And then his son uh, took over, you know. Yeah, his son Michael had the machine shop, yeah. mm -hmm. and Mark had yeah, the injection yeah. molding shop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, plastic can? Plus the can, the Sam Clement. Sam Clement. Yeah, okay. Sam Clement, yeah. Okay. And everybody was from the same town? Same town, yeah. Yeah. Same Clement. Same, same, same Clement, he, he didn't yeah. go to school or anything street. like that. And his father, too. The fifth elementary, they did. Okay? Actually, his father, one more year, another thing like that. But very intelligent people, I tell you. Otherwise, yeah, I can't see. do that. See, the more educated you are, the less educated you are. Yeah. I'll tell you, in 1940 one time, me and another two friends, we were talking in the post office. One of their uncle, he was inside working on the post office. And we were talking, when Italy declared war in the United States, oh, the, the, the war going to finish, you know, they were like a guerra lambo, like a lightning. The war was going to finish in one year, it's gone. In one year, the United States was in Sicily. In Sicily. Then we realized what well, dumb, dumb belly was, you know, Mussolini. Wow. <laughs> uh, your mother, okay. When <laughs> your father got some kind of an award. Can't remember what it was. Yeah. But I had to take pictures of them, so they came to my house on Elm Street. And I had chickens. And the chickens yeah. were running around. Your mother yeah. loved the chickens. Loved she, the chickens, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was like, she was almost in tears. She like, came home again. Yeah. Was, and Kathy said, she says, look, she'd probably rather be in Italy right now with the chickens. <laughs> she was so in love with those chickens. She was having a ball with them. She had, a, you know, like tears in her eyes. Hmm. And so, me, I got to tell you this, because... When we were talking like that, we, me and my two, two friends talked like this. And the mayor of the town, which was a Gasbarro too, the mayor of the town, another one was Gigi Marama. They had been in this country, they knew this country. And you, they were on the city hall, they was talking and walking back and forth. <clears throat> they, he asked what was talking about, about this war. The guy, they look at us, ah, poor kids. 
we bang our head against the wall. We don't know them. Oh, this is a, a under. We want to report. We, the uncle heard them about inside the office what we were talking about. He coming back. He said, "We don't stop talking about that. If you say one word, I kick your butt." From me to to the church in San Paulino, you know. So we come. What are we done? <laughs> we stay quiet. The year later, was in Sicily. The American was in Sicily. I tell you, we believe so much in that son of a bitch. We believe so much. When he, I'm trying to think. We, on our family, we married and three on the same family. Me, and my sister, and my brother married on the same family. One family yeah. married another. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Campagna's married uh, to Fuzoko. The Fuzoko, yeah. McCoy's and Hatfields. <laughs> Vittoriosos? Yeah. Oh, he was the black sheep. Yeah. He was out. <laughs> <laughs> Italian, he was hot. He was a comment. Was Italian, your, mother? Your, mother? your mother Italian? That's his yeah. my, sister. My mother's his sister. My sister. Okay. Yeah, oh, oh, all right. See, yeah. they're all connected. Yeah, my mother married a Vittorioso. She was the oh. only outside. Okay. Yeah, everyone She's else. She's the youngest one. She never met my father until she came to this country. She was 17 years old. Wow. When she met my father. He goes, he gave my mother prayer in uh, September. He goes, after father died, he returned in Rice County, but he made my mother pray again. And after that, in September, he came back here. My sister was born in January the 3rd, the year after, 1933. Okay? She never met my father until she came in this country. 17 years later. Mm -hmm. I was I was five years old when I met my father. I met once. Wow. I was small. I was five years old. Uh, about one year. That's it. I got to know a little bit about Cofino. It was a beautiful town. Like after the wars, how Cofino was it now? Cofino is the name. Most... The name of Italy was born there. Cofino, because he fought four years of war against the Roman. They lost. Ah, one day they conquered the empire before that. Cofino people, the, the, the band around, you know, they fought with the, the Roman and conquered the empire. So after that, they don't want to give them the same privilege the, the Roman had. If you want to buy a house, you got to go to Roman council. So they approve, they approve or not, they, you know, mm. anything you have to do, it go to America, uh, it, uh, it well, Roman Council. Wasn't the original name Pentima? Pen no, no the original Corfinium name was Corfinium. Was, the name Corfinium. Corfinium was original. It was so the capital of the Roman Empire. After that, after that, he said, well, why do we have to do those? All the tribe, the people who were around, the brutes, the market, they united. To fight against the Roman, because they got the same privilege to fight with you to conquer the empire. Why can't we get the same privilege you got? Twelve so, different tribes met in Corfino yeah. to form this allegiance. And they formed the legion, the legion, Italic legion, in Corfino was the capital. So, if you see, in Corfino, they still relieved from, you know, for 2,000, 3,000 years ago, or 4,000, whatever. And the cathedral was built in 1100 mm -hmm. in Corfino. You see the cathedral of Corfino? You've been there. Mm -hmm. Yep, many mm -hmm. times. So then after the, after the Romans after the, pocketed, four, four they years changed of the war, name, right? The Roman, they lost. And they changed the name? And they, the Roman Caesar changed the name. Did. Pentima, Pentita, you repent. You repent, you Pentima. little things. Pentima. And it was Mussolini. That's what it means. Mussolini Mus changed it back. Mussolini in 1929. He changed it back changed to it back. I was born in Pentima anyway. Yeah. I was born in Pentima. Yeah. 1926 and he changed it back, when you were born. No, I think 1929 was. No? No, 1929. And I was born in Pentima, right there. Yeah, my yeah. grandmother was oh, birth you, certificate you mean they Pentima changed too. it back to Corfinio. Huh? After they changed the plan, yeah. Mussolini. That was in 26, yeah. yeah. 
You repent, you little repent things. For so yeah. Yeah. Repent. Yeah. Yeah. And and Mussolini said that's not right. They fought for what they wanted. Oh. That's we're changing that. And he got rid of that. And it, he named it Corfinio, which is the modern Corfinium. Yeah. Uh, Corfinium we were was watching Latin, one of Latin those name. stories one time, you know, of the old days and the whatever the like Ben Hur mm. or something like that. But they have more modern ones. Well, the and, more Latin names back then. Yeah, Jesus. and actually. Um, one of the Caesars said, when they said, where are you going? And he said, I'm going back to Corfinium. He, they used that in, in that show. One time, they were excavating yeah. and put a vineyard or thing like that and with a machine. They found a lot of, uh, what do they call it, the stone? Relics. Uh, relics from the antique uh, uh, Roman. They say they that... Nearby, uh, a ruder, a back, uh, you know, a wall. It was all over the place. You find little wall in the world there. They say that from the church oh. to the center, there's a tunnel under uh, the yeah. road that comes to the center. Mm -hmm. And in the center, there's supposed to be a amphitheater. Uh, amphitheater. Did you hear that, Sandro? Uh, no. Yeah. yeah right, right under, under the square. The square. Right on the square. See when they put oh, the it's buried line thing. Yeah, it, mm. and the streets are all tied. And it costs. It's very antique. Millions to put it back. <laughs> I don't know for four thousand, <laughs> three thousand years. Very ago. antique. <laughs> My gosh. Doesn't describe it. <laughs> oh, you got, you got, you got some wall, even down after the start reconstruction, like a, uh, a castle, one part of it, and like that. Never touch it. They built some other thing in the top. Right near the square. And when we started, we had to give the check to my father. He used to give us $5 each. <clears throat> every day, every year, we had to go for $5. We had to go to Boston. I had to go to Boston. Take the streetcar, no, the bus, streetcar, and the elevator to go to Boston and work on mm -hmm. Washington Street. Uh, they work nearby, they can walk. The way. They used to this part, I think they, they can even walk to go over there. You were but talking they, when you lived in Denver. Uh, it took uh, almost yeah. an hour. Yeah. More than an hour to go to work for me, you know. Mm -hmm. His father, my grandfather, my <coughs> uncle's father, gave each of them a plot of land to grow tomatoes. Oh. Yeah. I only had work for him, and I don't know what I think. And when he showed my father his plot, and my father says, you want me to do what? <laughs> Grow tomatoes? He says, I ain't growing tomatoes. Says, you can have it back. I don't want it. One day, my mother wants to make sauce. She goes and she's picking tomatoes. Mm -hmm. She has her apron on, so she has all the tomatoes she's carrying in the apron. And my grandfather sees her, mm -hmm. and he says, where are you going with those tomatoes? And she says, I'm gonna make tomato sauce. Those are my tomatoes. <laughs> They're not your tomatoes. Your <laughs> husband didn't want the land. She took, the tomato, the, she took the tomatoes, she started throwing them at my grandfather. Did she end up with making a sauce? She made a sauce, <laughs> yeah, she made a sauce.